So I've decided to change my approach here. Uh, by the way, uh, this car has uh, ABS, so uh, that uh, may be different than your L series. But uh, just wanted to identify something here. Uh, this one here with the there you can see it there. It's uh, at the bottom side there, the front. Uh, that is the uh, driver's side uh, back brake line and the one behind it this one here would be the this one make sure you get that right this is the passenger side rear brake line um, <clears throat> so I've uh, taken the line out and put a plug in it and one thing I want to point out is that this particular fitting here for the driver's side rear is a larger fitting is it going to focus on or not? I don't know. Um, this is a 12 millimeter versus uh, all the others are uh, 10 millimeter, like uh, w where it screws in the rear uh, brake cylinder, etc. Uh, flex lines, it's all the 10 millimeter uh, size uh, bubble flare, bubble type flare. Whereas this one is a 12 millimeter. So generally, when I do brakes like this, I uh, I unscrew it. I put a plug in so it can't, you know, drain the, all your brake fluid out while you're working on the brake line, etc. So, uh, so I'll just reuse this nut. It's it's in good shape and it's not all corroded or anything. So, so I'm gonna go with a full brake line right from the basically master cylinder all the way back on the driver's side since it was a little bit more rusty than I like. I'll just show you my little uh, brake plugs that I make here for uh, screwing in a uh, like a flex line or something when you're working on it. Um, it's basically just a couple two and a half inch long piece of uh, brake line with the proper flare on the end there. In this case, it's bubble, and uh, then at the other end I uh, fold it over on itself and uh, braze it shut. And these. Uh, these, like I say, um, well, I can show you here. So you got a flex line sitting like that. You just, uh, just screw it in the end, and that way it stops your your brake system from uh, dripping, losing all your uh, all your brake fluid as it's uh, sitting. So these little plugs come in come in handy, and you know when you're done the job, you get them back. Um, you can make them out of uh, the one I got up here is just uh, an old rusty line, but uh, you can make them out of just a, a little short piece of rusty line too. Since they don't have to hold any pressure or anything, it's just uh, like a, a plug to plug the brake system up there while you're working on it, so it doesn't drip everything all over the place. So I've got my uh, homemade strut compressor here. Uh, fortunately, you need to strut compressor to work on the uh, rear struts on these uh, Saturn L100s. Um, so anyways, uh, the problem we have here uh, in high corrosion areas, this is the uh, end of the strut uh, where the nut goes on there. And the uh, nut goes on like that all the way down and this was sticking up out of it. Now you're supposed to be able to grab a hold of this end here with uh, I don't know, a socket or something, and then use a, one of those uh, offset wrenches to come out. And I don't have an offset wrench the right size. So what I do, I just uh, cut the uh, zip disc, this uh, off here, uh, even with the top of the nut, as close as I can get it. And then uh, use, uh, there's a, in this case it was a 15 millimeter uh, socket on uh, an impact to get it out. Now. To do that, I had to uh, took four four pairs of ice grips, clamped on the shaft, and um, that's not an easy job to do either because you got to fit it around this uh, show it to you, this god awful contraption here. So it's a uh, it's a joy, but I got it off. Uh, I guess the last time I did this, I ended up uh, using my famous uh, eight inch uh, carbide uh, cutter on a Dremel like type equipment there and. Uh, splitting the nut so getting that nut off can be a bit of fun but to do it you do have to have it in a, uh, a strut compressor 
because uh, it has a fair amount of tension on it. And uh, I took some pictures of the arrangement, um, how the strut, how the bottom of it sits in there relative to the um, spring holder end there. Uh, top end and all that because uh, the mount is uh, you know it only goes one way so you just have to keep that in mind you need the correct orientation of it when you get it assembled well I finally figured out a tool to uh, get this new bushing pressed into the uh, rear uh, bearing carrier uh, inch and a half pipe nipple and I got a couple, uh, well, they're like lawnmower uh, blade washers there. They got uh, holes in the center to center the uh, the puller, but uh, it uh, did indeed uh, suck that bushing into place. I tried uh, various C clamps and uh, other things, and nothing would work. But uh, this setup uh, worked out okay. So I got the first uh, bushing uh, pressed in there. Yeah, that was a bit of fun, but anyways, um, the second one here, uh, my press, uh, I couldn't figure any way of taking it out, so again, I uh, rotor ground it with an eighth inch carbide cutter, and when you look at these, there's like a, a ridge around the top there for a snap ring, and you have to cut pretty much right out to, to the outside diameter of it there, so, because uh, otherwise it doesn't want to doesn't want to pound out. I just used a, um, I guess, big pin punch and a mini sludge, and uh, she come right out. But you don't want to, you don't want to grain further than that, though, or you'll you'll slit your uh, casting. And on this one, I went towards the main part of the casting with my uh, deepest groove there, uh, just so you, you don't screw your casting up. And you, by the same token, you don't want to, you know, start pounding on it because uh, you can, uh, you could break it right off there so but now I got them both out so I can rig up my affair and push the next bushing in so uh, here's the way I uh, press this bushing in also just use a three jaw puller there with a couple of uh, washers with holes in the center to keep them centered there and uh, just uh, I gotta adjust this jaw outwards so that it'll clear when the bushing gets towards the end but uh, uh, seems to uh, work uh, pretty well to pull it in. Just furious the cat has showed up today. Help me finish off the Saturn, right, bud? <laughs> yeah, that's right. You know, it's colder than a cucumber out here, isn't it? It's just a bit above freezing. Had a little bit of snow based product earlier. Kind of like, uh, not flakes, kind of little round balls or pellets or something you call it but yeah so anyways I got the Saturn back together here Did a little bit of body work while I was at it there on the head with some high temp silicone to seal it I uh, riveted the uh, um, galvanized sheet metal in place and uh, silicone sealed around it first and then silicone the outside also anyways we uh, we got her back together here at the New bushings in it there, and uh, new strut, and wheel cylinder, and some brake lines, and, and uh, it, uh, I already took it for a drive, just had to bleed the brakes a second time, but uh, yeah, it's uh, almost like a whole new car, thumping and banging's gone, the passenger side isn't worn near as bad as the driver's side is, so yeah, it was a successful job on the repair job there on the, the rear suspension yeah so the Saturn can uh, baldify a tire uh, in about a year on the back there this soft driver's side back so now I'm gonna stick this on it a uh, 205 uh, 65 15 winter force I find they're a pretty good uh, snow tire and uh, they last uh, well also Firestone uh, Winter Force, the uh, good uh, good snow tires.